Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Community Kitchen. In honor of National Indigenous History Month, this week we are going to be talking about some foods that are important to Indigenous peoples. In this video, I'm going to give you some context and history to Indigenous food systems and share a story about an important dish. Then, Zahid will show us how to make bannock and discuss the Three Sisters soup. We hope you enjoy and learn something new. So let's get started with a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I also want to acknowledge my position as a white settler on this land and how the history that brought my family here generations ago was at the expense of the many peoples who already lived here. I encourage you to reflect on how you or your family came to this land and the impacts that your arrival may have had, intentional or not, on the people who were already here. So food is central to every culture and community, and this is true of Indigenous peoples. However, most non-Indigenous people would likely find it hard to name an Indigenous food or dish. In fact, many Canadian foods are actually Indigenous foods. Maple syrup, wild rice, squash, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, venison, salmon, trout, all are actually indigenous foods. There are also many unique recipes, ingredients, and cuisines that different First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people across Turtle Island, or what we call North America now, have prepared and enjoyed for thousands of years. Many of these foods are also called country foods when they're found on the land through foraging or hunting. And that's very different from how most of us get our food now by just walking into a grocery store. It's important to note that it was no accident that food was plentiful on Turtle Island. Many people for thousands of years have cultivated edible plants and other food sources in a sustainable way so that they could both eat enough for their families and maintain balance with the land. There are many complex agricultural systems and techniques that are used to maintain both the optimal nutrition and health in the food and in the land, which Zahid will talk about more through the example of the Three Sisters. Now, it would be impossible to talk about Indigenous food without acknowledging the effects that colonialism has had on Indigenous people's way of living. When Europeans first came to Turtle Island, they brought death and destruction through diseases like smallpox, and through direct violence when stealing the land. The destruction of many complex food systems, not allowing people to hunt on their own land, and segregating people onto reserves, have all restricted access to the country foods that they once relied on. And this restriction still remains to this day. Instead, indigenous people were often only able to eat European foods like flour, sugar, salt, milk, lard, and baking powder. These highly refined foods have many health impacts that we see to this day. The story of Bannock is one of resilience and of colonialism. Bannock was originally a Scottish food that was brought over by colonizers Yet, it is a food found in almost every indigenous nation. The ingredients, which include some that I just listed, were brought over by colonizers and weren't here before European contact. So, many people don't actually consider it to be an indigenous food at all. Yet, it is a food that is significant to many indigenous peoples. In fact, there are many versions of Bannock recipes across Turtle Island that have been adapted and tweaked by generations. I think it tells a complex story of adaptability and resilience to make the best of a terrible situation. 
Like history and like people, the story of Bannock is complex and neither fully good or bad. So with that in mind, Zahid will now show you how to make Bannock yourself and explain a little bit more about the three sisters. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Community Kitchen. Uh, in June, we also celebrate uh, the National Aboriginal um, People's Day. So um, for that, we're going to do something from uh, the Aboriginal cuisine today, which is something that maybe you've heard of. It's called bannock. It's kind of bread that the popular. Uh, it's it's in done by most the indigenous people. They have different variations on it. Uh, today, we're going to do the cream one. Um, and I hope uh, you like it. It's a, it's very simple. All the Bannock recipes are very simple. There are, like I said, some variations. Uh, we'll talk about them a little later, but um, uh, today we're gonna do uh, the curry one. So uh, you're gonna have, in your recipe that you're gonna really have, we have uh, three cups of uh, flour. I use uh, the unbleached one. I find it uh, a little better than the uh, the usual, usually the uh, all-purpose one would uh, definitely work too. So this is uh, the flour I'm using today. And then I have, um, this is the three cups of flour. I have a one and a half tablespoon of baking powder and I have a half uh, a teaspoon of salt. You could add more salt if you like, um, but uh, I think that's, that's uh, more than enough for this recipe. So as always, when we're baking, we'll make sure we mix the dry ingredients. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Make sure they're all incorporated very well and distributed evenly everywhere in it before we add any liquid or any fat or anything to the bowl. So that's, that's good. So now we're gonna be adding uh, fat to it, which is a half cup of it. Um, different stripes use different uh, fats. Originally it should be lard. Um, I prefer not to use it. I uh, replaced it. You could replace it with butter. You could replace it with um, margarine. You could replace it with ve uh, vegetable shortening. Um, also even oil. Uh, but it won't give you the same taste. Of, uh, but it would be uh, it, it would work, the recipe will still work. Now we need to crumble the, uh, the fat into the uh, flour mix. So we have to do it like that. Your hands are always the best way to do these things. So, Bannock is very popular, very like one of the most known recipes in the indigenous cuisine. Um, it could be fried, it could be baked. Uh, you could make it with milk, you could make it with water too. You could also uh, make it savory, you could make it a little sweeter, add a little sugar, some raisins, cranberries, um, if you like. Uh, we're making the, the original plastic one, the one like kind of a savory one today. So now that the, like you see, the, the butter is all mixed in. We add the last ingredient, which is milk. As I said, some we make a water in the middle. We put the milk in that well. And then we could go back to our fork and mix it. The thing with this dough is so easy. Like I said, it's five ingredients in total. And the first thing is very easy to do. Like you can see, you just you don't over mix because you want it to stay light and fluffy like the way a, a scone is or the way a biscuit is so uh, which is a very close recipe to that so as you see it's coming together it's becoming now we need to turn it into we need to dust the bowl and try to knead it a little bit, not for now, but we can find it a little better. So it 
like I said, we need to knead it a little bit, but not too much. You have to keep it airy, you have to keep it light. You don't have to come dense and overworked. So once you see that it's starting to come like this non-stick, you start to flatten it. You could use your hands or you could use the rolling pin. Either way is fine. You need to spread it until it's about one inch thick, which is the ideal. thickness for this thing. You like it thicker, it's up to you. You could always adjust stuff like this, but that's how they usually do it. So it's like about one inch thick right now. Now originally they, they will cut it into circles and they will flatten it. Uh, we're, we're doing it like so to, if we, the circle would be the the usual shape for it so this is how it's gonna be that's how classically originally done in a grease pan we drop it just for fun we're gonna make some different shapes today so it would be the star shape don't worry about being a little sticky it's it's okay it's better this way okay get it out of here so this is will be a little cute flower for us. We're gonna make another classic shape, which is here. And let's do a star, why not? And this is also another one, so just like that. Now in a 400 degree, it has to be high heat. We just bake them. Uh, they shouldn't take more than, I would say, anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. Uh, they should be golden brown. You could, uh, different uh, stoves have different temperatures and strengths, so it might take a, a couple minutes less. Keep an eye on them. Once you see that they're golden brown in color, it means it's ready. So we're gonna um, take a little break now until to, we bake those so you could see exactly how they look like and we're gonna talk about other stuff concerning the Aboriginal cuisine. We'll, okay. Okay, so here it is. Uh, it's baked. It uh, took uh, even less than 20 minutes because the stove was really hot and ready. And, uh, and uh, if you can see, you don't even need a knife for it. You just slice it like that. And, uh, you put some butter, some jam on it. It's a beautiful breakfast for the morning with your coffee or with your tea or any, anything you like. But uh, it would, what would really um, uh, go well with it is uh, soup. Um, and the soup that um, I want to talk about is called the Three Sisters Soup. Uh, it's very uh, well known also for the original uh, cuisine of uh, the indigenous people. Um, this soup is uh, has this name uh, from the technique that they use in gardening. Uh, they so call them the three sisters because they they group them and they plant them together because they work very well together. Uh, those three uh, vegetables are the um, corn uh, and the beans and also the uh, squash. So what they do, they plant the corn first and then uh, two weeks later when the corn comes up, they plant the, uh, the uh, beans around it. Um, in less than two weeks also the, the beans will come and then when the bees grow, they will have that uh, the corn already there as, uh, as like a structure which they can climb into. So, uh, so that would uh, work very well together. And the beans themselves give a lot of nitrogen to the soil, so that's uh, the food. So the, uh, the corn will uh, provide the structure, the, the beans will also provide, and uh, the beans will give you the nitrogen. And then the last thing they plant is the, the, uh, the squash around it. And uh, the squash has big leaves, as we know, and a lot of them. So what happens, the, they grow and they cover the roots. They keep the roots of the plants moist. They prevent weed from growing, and they also prevent the insects and the pests from in to reaching into the the stems and the plants themselves. So that's why uh, they uh, they plant them that way because they like sisters. They help each other. They 
work together and they grow. And those three vegetables are the vegetables that consist the soup that we're talking about, the three sister soup. It's a very simple uh, soup and it's very tasty and very good for you. And many variations with it. I will be including a recipe for that. We don't have time to do it, but I will be doing it in the kitchen, in the community kitchen. Um, for everybody and you will have the recipe for it. Uh, it's the, it start, starts with the basic of a soup, like I always mentioned before, the, it's called the maripa, which is the, uh, the onions, uh, the celery and the carrots. Then we add the corn, like we said, the three sisters, the corn, the squash, whichever way chopped, or you could bake it before time and add it. And we also add the beans, green beans, uh, dry beans uh, cooked obviously uh, are added to the soup you could make it vegetarian you could make it with beef you could make it with chicken um, vegan so uh, it's a very versatile soup it goes really well with the, the bread and um, I hope you like it I hope you try it and um, uh, I will see you again in two weeks thank you for watching